going with this shop talk question of the week. Are we ready? Yes. All right. Is there a statute of limitations on dating your ex, your ex's friend or family? It shouldn't happen. I, you know, I, I, I don't know. There's a fine line with that one. It shouldn't. Go, what you got, Amber D? I, I want to know. I'm just. I'm leaning towards just no. It's just. It's just messy to me, and it's like small circles, and it's just like there's so many people on the planet. Like you can't find somebody else. Like I don't know. It's just. Eh. There's so many people, it's so many people on the planet, but do we actually have access to them? I feel like with the World Wide Web, yes. And I feel like it's just, I don't know, I've seen it depicted in films and stuff. And I just feel like that's a whole headache you can avoid. You know, I guess it's true love or something, but y'all know how I feel about that. So. Look, look, the people don't know. The people don't know. So wait a minute. It's on your friend or family member. If they don't care and if they are totally fine with it, then yeah. But if they're not, go to the next. Is there a next? What? Okay, so wait a minute. So we're, we're talking statute of limitations. So we're talking time, time lapse. So we're not talking... Like three, well, I don't know, some people don't, they don't care. Because in some religions, like if the spouse, let's say if it's two brothers, if the brother passes, that wife goes to the next brother. Mm-hmm. Which. Yeah, that, that when I. <laughs> so that's one thing. But when you're dealing with the, the statute of limitations, like what if it's a 10 year lapse? What if it's a 30 year lapse? Like. You you dating somebody, all right, here's an example. You dating somebody in high school and matter of fact, let's say ninth grade freshman, so we're not even talking about senior prom and all that. A freshman in high school and then all of a sudden time goes by and you meet this person 30 years later. You actually, you, you knew them, but you didn't know them. And y'all sit, you have a drink, you're talking. I'm just giving you guys a scenario because that's what I do <laughs> in the arts. You're having a drink, you hit it off, and you find out that you guys really click. And they got the wrong one back then. That's that's a no-go? Is is it still off limits? Are you person still friends? Because if y'all not still friends, then no. Well, I would hope, like, I mean, well... Okay, we're not going to get into the analytics of what is a true friend. We're just going to shop talk. But, you know, y'all still cordial, but, you know, grown. And usually when you get older, you know, you meet your real friends in college. That, and that's a fact. I remember hearing that, and it really is a fact. You're lifetimers. But, um, like, you're still cordial, but y'all not every day there. You know, they're not on your do not call list, but it's not on your good morning list every day either. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I that, feel like, yeah, in that case, I, I would, yeah. I just feel like 30 years, yeah, that, that's a little far fetched. I'm, 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 yeah, we we going to do the same. I think it's. I think that much time has passed, it's fine, I guess. But I feel like it's, like, small-town politics. That's what it makes me think <laughs> of. Because, like, there's just a small pool of people to choose from that you actually have access to. Which is why, like, I'm for leaving small towns. <laughs> Leave. <laughs> oh, oh, that's why you like, mm, uh-uh. I'm out. Yeah, no. Just because, I don't know. You know, because I grew up in a very small town, and um, well, the pool would be yeah. smaller. So I mean, and dudes is pass arounds now. Let's keep it one hundred. Yeah, 
Yeah, they were. Oh, they're definitely pedophiles. <laughs> they ran through too. What'd you say, Nick? Community dick. That's what we call them. And do you really want that? Because I am so picky. I mean, right. listen, it, <laughs> your body count matter to me. And yes. real talk, I'm like, who was the last person they slept with? And, it, and I matter to me. So I'm looking like, okay, if you slept with her I, and I'm being, I'm, <laughs> I'm being transparent. Nah, you can't. Uh, uh-uh, uh, no, hex, no. Nah. I actually had that experience uh, again in a small town, and I met a guy online, and he was like, "Oh, my baby mama is from small, said small town." I said, "Really? Because I probably know her, especially if you know she's uh, skin folk." And uh, turns out I did know her, and I said, "Oh, no, 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 no." <laughs> <laughs> and that was the end of that. Um, absolutely, you're not gonna go from her to me, sir. <laughs> absolutely not. Yes, okay. Like, so like, and we're not even related, and it had nothing. Hey, to listen, do. Hey, Amber D, be like, uh-huh. we ain't about you ain't about to build up her self esteem on the account of me. Exactly. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Be like, oh shit, what happened? Oh, no, go ahead. Yeah, but it's a, it's just um. Like, not even family. Definitely, absolutely not family. I wouldn't mess with one of my family members' exes. Uh, but even just somebody I know, like I went to school with, I'm just like, oh, yeah. I'm just like, I'm a clean slate type of person. Just all new set of people. But you know what? Some guys don't feel like, they feel like, oh, okay, well, since, you know, the ratio is 1 in 12, like, I got oh. a shot. I don't, I really like, okay, we already know that women are looking at sex differently now. So the chicks is out here like, boom, whatever, we're going to get this out the way. Is it going to work or is it not? So the mindset has totally changed where chicks is like, let me see what you working with to see if I want to still kick it with you instead of investing all this time to be like, oh, do I want to invest all this time? Forget the dating part, because if you ain't got it going on, she leaving. Okay. Look, okay. <laughs> Where chicks is like, I don't want to pass around and I'm not following this person. Real talk. I- I'm so that person. Who? I'm not yes. following certain people. Like, Ooh. no. No. Like, and I feel like, and when a man is a pass around, that is like a trendy way of saying that he lacks sexual discipline. And if he and to me, if he lacks sexual discipline, he lacks overall discipline. He's not a disciplined man, and that's not to me. That's not masculine. So, you know, men out here swinging their thing around like a helicopter does not appeal to me. And <laughs> she's like, listen. Why did I have a? I had a visual of a propeller. <laughs> <laughs> why the ratio is 1 to 12 now instead of 1 to 8. It was 1 to 8 10 years ago. Well, 8 years ago. But like, come on. Listen, it, look, wait a minute. If you want in on this conversation, feel free to do so. The phone number here is 619-902-2287. 619-902-2287. Call me the wizard today because y'all can't see me, but I'm here. Okay. And I'm talking. But like, what is this? The Wizard of Oz? Who is it? The Grand Wizard. So tell me, let's let, let's get back on. We talked about the small town. Is it a statute of limitation on it? So you say Nick said it shouldn't happen. I'm with Nick. It's just it's a hard no for me. It's, it's like okay. So you supposed to you so so somebody's supposed to be Dizzle envied, like so. You, 
And the reason I say that is because if it's a hard no and it's a small town and it's only like three dudes that's cool and they get a divorce and he may be sexually disciplined and with his people and then he looks at you and find you attractive or and you guys click and it's a hard no because of your loyalty to her you know, from 15 know. years ago loyalty to her because like you said some people some women you don't want to come behind and so uh, when I found out in my particular situation who specifically was his baby mama I said because it, it made me change my perspective on him and his character and it had really it had very little to do and yeah just because I knew her you know what I'm saying it just seemed like like I said mess mess that I can avoid you know okay I, uh, no no I, I don't want to pass around dude I don't no. Okay, so what if he's not a pass around, Nick? He's not a pass around. Good dude. Is it? Is your loyalty? And we're just speaking generally, not actually. I mean, I'm asking you guys this question, but take okay. into consideration like your peers and the people that are around you. Mm-hmm. Is it that? Is it our loyalty as being skin folk to not cross that line? Our loyalty to that female. I, I would say yes. Yeah. Um, but. <laughs> and I would say, you know, and that's what, to, you know, for me and women like me, I, my ratio is not 12, 12 to 1 or whatever. 1 to wh- What, 12 women to 1 man? Right. No, that's not my ratio. So, okay. Um, <laughs> that's, the, that's the stats. Of the, of the you, know, that's the, that's, you know, that's if you're staying within your own race, but like. Uh, no, yeah, I think it overall is just, especially if I know the baby mama, and and as a woman, I'm not going to be like, as gullible as some of these other young females, like, oh, well, she was this and she was that, and we had all these problems. First of all, if a man's telling me that, that's a red flag. Now, you got a point. Uh-uh. I like that. You know, so, you're, you, you, you said it. You answered, you answered the question. So, <laughs> statute of limitation, it sounds like it's no, unless it's a uh, baby mama, I hate using that term. A child's mother. Well, I mean, it's just don't come me, don't know, come behind me. No, it's a hard no if it's a baby mama. But if they just dated in the past, depending on how she, how I know the girl to be, because like I said, it reflected when I knew he chose her. I was like, oh, uh, uh, no. So he, he's a bad, bad decision making. So that. <laughs> Is it, but is there a statute of limitation on decision making? So what if they had a child back in like 20, 21, and then now he's 45? Yeah. Can you hold that against them? Would you, would you hold that against them still? I would, I, I would, it wouldn't, I, it wouldn't be a, a total loss, but it would be like on the point system, on Amber's <laughs> dating point system. You know, instead of being like, okay, you're eliminated, it's like, well, now you're negative 50 points. Like, it will be substantial, but not completely, complete elimination. Okay, what about you, Nick? Which you... In my younger days, I didn't care. Now, I'd be like, eh, no, I don't know. <laughs> A pass around. My family had to pass around, like... See, that, nah, see, that's what... Who want to go to... That is... That's the very reason, talking about the family had to pass around. So clearly somebody in the family like, okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and give it a shot. I'm going to give it a shot. I don't want to go to the cookout or to the family reunion. You done been with everybody up in the reunion. Like, bye. Right. Two of my cousins and, two, and both of my sisters. <laughs> And that's, I was the last one though, but it was just like a thing. Whoa, whoa! I caught that. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Did you say you was the last one though? Did did we say that? Yes, I did. That's, <laughs> no, I 
Did we say that? She thought it, she thought your girl didn't catch it. The, the wizard had caught it. The wizard caught it. Yeah, I was the one that actually ended up having this uh, relationship. I had a woman he was living with, and he was living by himself. But I was the one that, he, yeah. Okay. Younger, younger days. I, I got you. I got you. I got you with the younger days. Okay. So let's keep it 100. This is what we do. I can slap myself now looking back at it. But, and then our bond was a little bit stronger because I actually... Out of all of them, I was the one that ended up pregnant. But we lost the baby, so forever tied. <sighs> but yeah, it be so in my younger days I it was it's now hell no. Would not ever happen. Ever. No. Wouldn't go back. I would I would I definitely wouldn't do that. Like, no, nah, that's Well, that's okay, crazy. so my point my point. Younger days 20, 30 years later, boom, maybe this can work. And you get to know who they are. That's and it's like, so it. so once you know who they are, listen, how many, I got so many, baby, let me tell you something. I remember my mother always saying, because I used to be laughing, I still be laughing all the time at the, at the worst times. I can't help it. I always find the funny. I do, I'd be like, oops. So you know how you see that bum on the street? Back when you were younger, we'd be walking to the store and you see that. You'd be like, oh, they slobbing, you know, drunk, like, eh. And let me tell you what my mother used to say. Kudos to her. She all right with me. Let me tell you. <laughs> look, all the way, you look, growing up, she would say, for every placement, there's a replacement. And I'd be laughing. You know, I'm over the top. Ah! And she would say, Mel. For every placement, there's a replacement. So with that being said, and that's what I heard growing up. So I was, I didn't want to replace that dude. You know what I'm saying? So it kept it kept me sane. And where I'm going with this is if you see for every placement, there's a replacement. So when you decide you're going to have sex with somebody, I don't want to be that type dude. Like years later, be like, oh, I, oh, I had a baby. Oh, oh. You know what I'm saying? Like, the bum on the street, you be like, I just slept with the bum on the street, and then you feel in some type of way when, and then you living off of his memory. Oh yeah, he was like the star of the basketball team. Not anymore. No, he's <laughs> No, no, I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just saying when you make those decisions being younger, and then you be right. like, oh man, I listen here. I always say don't date potential like right now, but yeah. when you younger. You might want to look at what is their potential <laughs> if you gonna go there. Like, do I see some structure there? And one thing I gotta say, even looking back, like my little my boyfriends from back in the day, they all came from two family households. I noticed that, but that was what I was attracted to. Not that I that's who I sought after, because that wasn't the case. It just happened to be I was always attracted to just that guy. And then, you know, you come, you meet the parents, of course, not all the time now. Like, now I'm like, don't, I don't want to meet your parents because I ain't going to be sticking around. Yeah. <laughs> like, but when you're younger in school, it's like, oh, you go there, you kick it, you have a good time. And they all came from that. So it was something, maybe it was structure that I actually was attracted to and be like, okay, we're at this stage of the game. I'm not embarrassed. I'm not looking like, oh, okay. I'm looking like, oh, they, they still got it going on. Who's that? Oh, that was my boyfriend. He successful. Even at elementary, you know what I mean? You'd be like, oh, they doing good. Versus the bum on the street. Now back to what I want to say, what I want to talk about. Is there a statute of limitation? Like high school, is high school serious dating? Like y'all go to the prom? Like some pe- To some people it is because of some people peak in high school. That means, you know, you look at the high school sweetheart situation where you have people who dated in high school, got married outside of high school, and uh, a lot of them are still together. So, do y'all yeah, remember, it's, it's serious. In other situation. Do y'all remember a few shows back before this, look, before the Freaknik documentary, when that dude, remember I was telling you that guy proposed to me, it was like, I was like, oh, I'm going to Freaknik this weekend. <laughs> 
<laughs> Look, now they're going to be like, what was Freak Nick? Hold on. No. <laughs> the so You do have your high school sweethearts. So are you saying that if you had sex with them, they're off limits? If they had sex and it's a friend, they're off limits. Because every boyfriend don't mean you had sex with them. I mean. That's true. That's yeah. definitely true. <laughs> So it depends on who your friend is. If you know your friend's a loose booty, then you don't want to be in front of that. Okay. <laughs> let, let me tell you. You know how you had that one person. I, listen, you married, been married the whole nine. I got one person. Bet, watch this. Bet not none of my friends date them. Bet not none. Zero zilch. I moved on. Don't even want to be with them, but they don't, don't even do that. And look, and then Nick gonna come clean. I, this was crazy. This was crazy. But I, let me say, in in Nick's defense, <laughs> we didn't know each other. Isn't that crazy? Amber did look alike. The friend. Wasn't that crazy? Wait a minute, though. We did not know each other. This was my boyfriend. Watch this. No, but watch this. My boyfriend in college. I'm going. I'm going to visit the whole nine. Nick, we just having a conversation, talking years because we're cool now. Up here, why was I getting cheated on? <laughs> and I, and when when Nick happened to throw the name out, I said, "What?" I was shocked. I know, I was shocked. <laughs> like, at the time, and it's at the time, said boyfriend. Whenever Mel wasn't visiting, we was visiting. But I hooked him up with one of my cousins. I ended up hooking up. First, I was hooked up with the one friend, but that friend was messing with somebody else, so got hooked up with the other friend. So I with the other friend. This one particular day, because they used to come over to my town all the time and hang out with another friend of mine that I actually went to school with that they went to college with. They was all cool. How you like that, Amber D.? I'm thinking he I'm the had, girlfriend, and he, I got a pass around. He had, he had our said friend, because we was at my friend's house, which, you know, that friend was going with a friend of mine, called me upstairs. I get upstairs. I'm like, what's up? And next thing you know, somebody busts in the room, legs in the air. Um, I'm upset with myself because that shouldn't have happened. And, of course, what he do? Run back and tell the friend that I was with, tell all the friends. Like, guess what happened? Like, that it was a setup to me. Like, why? I was upset. So, more, so moral of the story is, I just had to share that because it was different. I had, like I said, I had, I don't care. He was a pass around, but still, no, none of my friends been I talked to. Like, no, bye. <laughs> it's still there. But I think, like, if you have a child with somebody, that, that should be off limits. Right. And, you know, like, I don't care how much time lapse. I think that that should be off limits unless they choose the person now you have seen where spouses will choose like if something something terminal is happening they'll choose mm-hmm. the next mate mm-hmm. and put like that because they feel as though that that's a good one for their children mm-hmm. me um that's something that i don't know that i can do and especially oh, okay. if it's a friend and then who don't you be thinking about like you doing everything they like Ugh, like you know, I'd be like, ooh, you know, they doing this. They already, you, you know. Wait a minute, Mel. I just thought about something. Huh? Did he? Did he be watching the show while we? Oh uh, yes, he does. You know he do. I, I'm gonna get a text. I know I'm gonna get a text. He always does. He does. So exciting. He 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 he's a he's a big supporter of mine too. Kudos to him. I I ain't mad at him though, cause it's over. But. Correct. It's so interesting how life takes its toll. So what I'm saying is, which is a prime example, we as skin folk tend to be more loyal to each other, mm-hmm. female skin folk, than dudes are. Yeah. So so. I don't know. I feel like they're they're loyal in a different way. Loyal how? Different way because they'll kick it with somebody that they go tell the friend, and then they still all friends, and you the outcast. Yeah, I I felt that for a couple years. I was outcast for a while. Yeah, why is that? Like the whole bros over hoes mentality. I think definitely they have their own, their own kind of loyalty to each other. 
I was the victim because I didn't know what was going on. But were you the victim, Moo? Yeah. Because you had to consent. I was kind of set up. Like, what the heck is going on? Like, I was shocked. Like, in total shock. Seriously. Like, and next thing you know, yeah, I'm like, because I, like, literally felt bad when I, 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 like, left my friend. I hurried up, put clothes on, and left my friend's house, went home, sat in the tub, and just cried. Like, what the just happened? What did I do? Was it because you got caught? No, no, not right there. It wasn't until the next day that, you know, there's a miss saying something. And I was like, but I left my friend's house and went home immediately and just started crying, like, jumped in the tub and just started crying, like, what happened? Because that was like, I was, I was shocked. I was literally, literally shocked. Like, what the, so like, that part they don't know, but yeah, I went into a panic and I went home and I just cried, cried in the tub, cried myself to sleep, like, why did you allow that to happen? I, but I was shocked because everything happened so quick. I was shocked, just like completely shocked. And of course, I got ostracized. Like they were still cool, still. You know that they still to this day, all three of them still cool. But for the longest time, I was shocked. And like my one cousin, she she told him, "Y'all know y'all was wrong." But then y'all still friends. Y'all know y'all was wrong. So they should. So so guys. So they should be mad at each other because they both knocked off the same chick. See, that's what's weird. And I don't, I don't understand why I need to hear from my fellas. Why what? women are, why, why are we so upset that a what? chick, you know, she just sat there and knocked off a dude, or maybe it's because guys usually talk to each other and be like, Hey dude, you all right with me kicking it with blah, blah, blah versus a female saying, yo homie, you okay with me talking to him? I think they were more or less trying to test me, but my thing was... You I failed! Was, they, <laughs> if it was a I, test, then you failed! It's been happening because I never even thought of him like that because I knew he was kicking it with my cousin and we was cool. I never even thought it, and they knew how I felt about the old boy, but I guess like, yeah, so I never even thought about him like that, and while he was kicking whatever and just I was just like, what the hell? Okay, hold on, hold on. Go ahead, caller. You're live on Shop Talk with Mel. What you got? Uh, good morning. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't uh, mess with none of my uh, homies' exes, especially a, ba- a baby's mom. You know, that's too close to home, I feel, especially if you're my homie. But I know the city ain't but so big. City like Youngstown, so we can't help but run across uh, somebody's ex. But no, I wouldn't, and I would. I would frown if my so-called homie would do that to me. You know, my my reasoning may be different. You know, because uh, if you uh, get with my kid's mother, even though me and her ain't together no more, and you start putting your hands on her, then my kid's gonna get involved, and which gonna cause me to get involved. So no, I wouldn't uh, approve of that. You know, oh, but it's a lot. It's a lot of that going on. But go ahead. What you about to say? Okay, I can understand that. But what if? Uh, hopefully, see, I'm not used to the domestic part of nobody putting their hands on somebody. So hopefully, that's not the case. But it if, happens though. If it okay, and it does. It's reality. But if it wasn't the case, you still would not be okay with that. Yeah, I would say a kids, uh, kids mother got kids with. No, I think that's too close. Okay. To me. Okay. Too close. I, I can but, respect that. But again, we're from a small city such as ours. The city ain't but so big. And you're going to run into something like that. But no, you should go ahead yourself and be like, no, nah, I know that's my dude's ex. And I know he's going to be in his feelings about it. So I would rather keep the friendship than, um, you know, falling out with a, a girl who I probably ain't going to end up being with. Anyway. Okay, well, let me ask you this. Let, let me ask you this. If your children are 30 years old, 25 to 30 uh, years old, is it the same right. stance? Well, I think it's still the same thing because that's my kid's mother. You know, I think it's certain rules you can't cross. 
But nowadays, it ain't no rules. Don't nobody follow the rules no more. You know? But then at the same time, a lot got to do with the female. You can't really trip on a dude, especially if she allow him to, if she get with him. Because she, she knew that was your dude. Okay. You know what I, mean? I feel she you. She still got with him. Yeah, she still got with him. So you can't, you can't just be mad at him. What about her? And then it make you wonder... Uh, well, when you was with her and he was coming around because that was your dude, was they looking at each other then? Now that's the question. Yeah. Dig that. Dig that. Uh, but, that but again, like I said, we from a small city. It ain't quite so big. But you got to be uh, solid enough to be like, you know what, I ain't going to do that. Because I got a lifetime of friendship with this dude and I don't want to fall out by the nut. You know what I mean? Okay. Maybe that's what it is. Cause who's to say I'm going to get with her and be with her? She might, once I get to get with her, she might turn me off somewhere down the line. Uh, no, nah, I'm cool. This nigga was tripping over her? No. You know? Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate your input. All right. All right. Bye-bye. Yeah. Now, that's a good point. All right. My case, I wasn't looking like at him like that. So, like, yeah, but but look at the age, though. Look how old you were, though. See, exactly. We were in our early twenties. They they were still in college. Like, yeah. So yeah, I, yeah. To this day, I still regret that because that kind of shaped and messed up the relationship between me and the other one. It, it messed up. Now watch this. Okay, but we still see. I still see him and his boy. They still together, tight. Tight is. But the women are the ones that fall out. Like that's crazy. Uh huh. And I, me personally, I just feel like you know it's a nice thing. You know, it, it's it's a nice thing if you know being loyal. But women, we are so emotional. We be stuck. Or mad at somebody from way back when. The fight, exactly. Over over some dizzle, like he said. Over some dizzle. And it's like, what? Like, and that neither one of us have right now. Right. And you can't own it. But God seemed to get past it and just be like, boom. Okay, been there, done that, done. It's nothing personal. What you got, Amber D? Um, yeah, I just feel like I agree with the caller. Like, it's just, uh, especially because you, because the original question was family or close friends. Yes. But for me, it's... Not close, I didn't say close friends. I said family or friends. Okay, yeah. Family or friends is just a hard no, just because I feel like, again, like, there's plenty of fish in the sea you can get with somebody else. Um, but even just, like I said, even if I just know the person... Like, I actually know someone that they used to deal with. And, like, I have an opinion about that person that they used to deal with. Like, that's going to have an impact, you know? Okay. So, I'll take it even further. Like, I don't know. I just, I don't, I don't know who you used to deal with. And if I do know them, then it might be. Okay, associates. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right, let's move to associates. So, it's somebody that you know, but y'all aren't friends. And then all of a sudden... Y'all, um, y'all were like really good friends. They never been over each other's house. And then you start dating a guy and then all of a sudden y'all cool, y'all friends or y'all like fifth cousins down the line. And they be like, oh, that's my cousin. Man, what? Like, you don't even know my birthday. Right. Yeah. That's not the same. Yeah. Unless like one of them's a scallywag. Then I feel like, you you dealt with them before? Ew. But <laughs> Scallywag, I have not heard that in a minute. It depends on who it is. Like, you used to let, oh, never mind, I'm cool. Yeah. But see, here, here's the thing. But here's the thing, though. But we tend to, as females, we got to make that other person look bad because we want the dude. He could be who he want. You, he don't like you anymore. And then you find out, oh, okay, well, we're cousins. Cousins, I ain't seen you at Nan Reunion. It's been... What, 30 years? Matter of fact, you've never even been to my house. What? What? Like, come on. And, and, you know, trying to make the other person look bad, too. And I'm using air quotes since I'm the wizard today. (laughs) Let me tell y'all what I'm doing. To make somebody else look bad because he doesn't want you. When do we stop that? Well, no, I thought the question. 
question was that. <laughs> I've never done that now. <laughs> yeah, no, the question was that, you know, there's a guy that wants to date you, but used to deal with a family member or a friend. Right. Well, yeah, it's, this is, it's, it's all inclusive. Let me go to the comments real quick. Okay. Oh, okay. My fellas hollering. P- appreciate you guys. I will never get with my closest dude's ex. I don't care how long it is. It's a rule to this that people aren't following. Okay. So he said the same thing. Let me see. They're following no more. And my homie can't get with my kid's mama or my current. Everyone else is fair game. Meaning I wouldn't care. Uh, okay. Let's see here. We got Nate Water to Facebook said it's a diff. It's a difference. Men might just been there for the smash. No feelings involved. So that's probably where the difference is at between the men and the women. But we all, if usually, look, usually when women have sex, it's feelings involved. Usually. Now it's not. And when, Amber D, you said when, um, you, it's plenty of fish in the sea. Where the fish at? Because the water is toxic, honey. They die. Right. I mean, that's, I mean, I just feel like it's a mindset thing. And then, yeah, just, you know, you got to move around. Moving you around. You go on, there's just like one or two fit people. For me, it's one person that my friends know. I, I heard them over and it said friend. Okay. With oh. that being said, said friend started dating a relative of mine. And your relative got down. Now that's foul. That's foul when you have your certain people. Go ahead. He didn't know that we knew each other. Oh, okay. Well, who fault is that? He didn't know. Okay, he so uh, what? Years back. Yeah, but he you did. can't you can't hold hold him. Okay, I, and I get your point. You can't hold that against him. Now, in a defense, in a defense of the guy. Most black people in a small town, they all related. All right, Amber D? Yeah, I agree. Okay. So, why is it that we get upset if they go to the other side and date a white girl? That you shouldn't. I mean, because I feel like, so black women, I think as a collective, are more race loyal than black men. That's the data. But I don't think black women should be race loyal. Like, you shouldn't care. How do we fix that? I mean, because I feel like a part of it, you can't make somebody like you, respect you, choose you when they don't want to. The end. Like, you have to accept what is reality, what is before you. And Mm -hmm. so instead of trying to chase someone and say, well, we have the same skin tone, so you ought to be with me and you need to choose someone that looks like me or whatever. Just accept it for what it is. Now, I like the fact that you said um, that's not your ratio, your personal ratio, one in 12, mm-hmm. because you date outside your race. Mm-hmm. Do you get more of a kickback being a female dating outside of your race? Do you get more of a kickback from your peers or from a black man? Black we females are black males. You you dating outside. So if somebody sees you uh, dating a white guy, for instance, uh-huh. do you get kickback from your black friends to be like, girl, why are you dating a white dude or black males? I mean, my friends, I, you know, they know me. So they already know that's what time it is. So definitely not from anyone that I consider a friend, male or a female. Um, and then I've never, honestly, I've never gotten kickback, like negative feedback from black women. Okay. Ever. It's, it's pretty much black. only been uh, black men. Okay. And I know the inverse is true for black men that think out. So, you know. Yeah, because we'd be like, wait a minute. Now watch this. We do. We'd be like, oh, okay. So the our successful black men tend to date white girls. And then it's like, well, there's some good black women out here. Uh-huh. That's us. You know, let's be real. Why won't you date her? 
But then when we deal with our city and the availability and putting yourself in position, which you said Amber did at the beginning, as far as like get out, that's who's around and that's who's in their face. So do we just expect them to just stay loyal to the race? Is that fair? Black women or black men? I'm talking about a black man. Do we expect them to stay loyal to the race when there's no black women in their arena? Or do they need to go back to their childhood and find somebody back there that's readily available? I think black men can do whatever they want to do. And it's not in black women's position to tell them what to do or what they ought to do and who they should choose. And historically, black men have done whatever they wanted to do anyway. So it's, it, to me, it's a moot point. You know, black men historically, you know, have have the highest divestment rate of any demographic in America. So they're the most likely to have a, you know, a partner that doesn't share their race. And that's just what it is. Um, you know, and they, you know, since I want to say probably like the fifties, you know, the narrative, uh, the image of black women and like, why do black men date non-black women? You know, they have all, there's a whole list of reasons, of, you know, why black women are undesirable and why they, they have to go get with a white woman, basically. Um, and that's their business, you know, and um, thinking that black women have any kind of control of that, I think is like one of the root issues. And just even caring is, uh, to me, a fundamental problem because Black women should be prioritizing themselves, their own security, their own future, their own well-being, and what that means and what it takes to get to where they want to be at in life and not fretting after, you know, a man that's not choosing you, doesn't see your value, um, you know, thinks that you need to do a 180 makeover to be worthy. Okay. Uh, Let me go here to the comment. Uh, Maurice Hines Jr., Facebook says this is his stats 72 percent of blacks date black men date white women especially on the police force and i'm with you amber did you choose who you choose but let's talk about um what we hear i know that i hear that black women are aggressive now for the listening audience who can't see Nick's uh, facial expressions and all that stuff. <laughs> it's coming off a little um, true. <laughs> what you what you got, Nick? What what you think? Come on, T- tell us how you wait, 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 Nick, wait, wait, Nick, wait, let, wait. Who's gonna be? Hold on, Amber D. Go ahead, Nick. W- w- tell me what you're thinking. I I hear all the time from black guys the reason why they choose white women is because white women will do what they say do anything they say, they don't argue, and da-da-da-da. So, yeah, I can see that. Okay, go ahead, Amber D. Um, yeah, and I just say, as a black woman, as a black woman, I see black women being aggressive and argumentative. And I think, again, what is the root of that? You trying to control someone else. You trying to dictate how someone else feels. If a man is telling you, I don't like you, you're obese. I, I don't like your skin tone. I don't like your hair texture. The fact that that N-word got the same hair texture and skin tone as you is irrelevant. That don't matter. He literally told you how he felt about you or they they demonstrate their actions tell you how they feel about you. And then you want to sit here and go back and forth with that human being about their own feelings instead of accepting it and moving around. And see... That's a lot of the problem with us. That That's a lot of the problem. And you also hear that, well, they want to be my mother. Black men say that. Like, she act and like she my mother. That, trying to control, so like, kind of controlling them. Yeah, and that goes back into, uh, you know, especially like these hotel mammies, where it's like, well, black men can't compete with the white man. They can't compete. They can't. They're literally, the narrative is literally black men are unable to function in their manhood. So you, black woman, are obligated to assist him when 
saying he's not able to compete with other men is emasculating in and of itself. Black men are able to compete with non-black men. And if you set that expectation in your mind and in your dating life, no, you can compete with the Hispanic man. You can compete with the Asian man. You can compete with the man. It's an even playing field. It's a fair name. So I'm going to need you to step up and do what needs to be done. But when you have that mentality of, well, they just can't do it because the white man's holding them down, the white supremacy, and uh, it's my job to put on my cape and come and save him. That is emasculating. Like, you're literally saying they can't do it. Because there are a lot of black men that don't want better. Exactly. Encourage them all you want. Because I'm about encouraging. But if you ain't trying to do better, then don't sit there and tell me that I'm trying to control you. And I'm, what, are you my mother? No, I'm not. I'm trying to encourage you. But I'm seeing that you, you're not trying. You don't even want to get to the next level. You don't want to do better. So, yeah, so that's not always the case. A lot of times, a lot of these black men are comfortable in where they're. And that's, and that's the thing. And so when someone, when a man tells you, Oh, you're, I feel being like you're controlling me. I feel like you're being my mother. That's the way he's receiving you. Leave it at that. And the reason why, like you're calling it encouragement or whatever, but the reality is there's conflict because he's complacent. And right. black women think that if I browbeat him, if I speak life into him, if I haggle him, if I nag him, it will make him be a better man. It won't. It's just going to make you bitter, resentful, and irritating and make him not like you. You see a man where he's at, leave him right where he's at. Because if he wanted to do better, he would do better on his own. He would have, he would already been doing better before you even met him. So I, to me, the issue is black women have been socialized to sit here and carry men and carry the community and be the backbone of the community. What? We're not even built like that. We're not even built to do that. Like, it's not my job as a black woman to save a black man or speak life in him if he ain't speaking life into himself. Okay. Boom. I, look, I heard that. Now, but watch this, though. Oh, oh, let me go to the comment. I just seen one. So, Noelle Fagan to Facebook said, we are fixers. I am not a fixer. Right, and that's me, me personally. That's, that's the problem. And so when black women are out here trying to fix other people, not even uh, people that other demographics that don't even have nothing to do with black women, because black women have embraced being the social justice warrior. A, that is masculine. That is a warrior position. So you're taking away, you're de deducting black women's femininity. And then you're also reducing the the likelihood of people seeing black women as victims or as in need of protection. Well, you know so, what? Go, you know, what's interesting. What's interesting is we do tend to do. Well, let me put this out here. No woman king over here. <laughs> okay. Cause uh, that I'm just speaking for myself. Uh -uh. I'll be a queen, but nope, you got the king position. Okay. Do what it is you need to do. I like the fact that Amber D said, if you see where he at, leave him right there. Yes. I'm not trying to be a fixer, but we find ourselves. And when I say we, I'm just speaking overall black women. We find ourselves trying to be the fix it person. Let me see. But the problem is we are the ones that end up being abused and browbeaten because we miss fix it. And it's like, well, I know they're doing this because this happened or this happened in the past. They didn't get a fair shot. What Amber D was saying, they didn't get a fair shot. So I know it's hard for him. What about me? Whereas a white woman, she don't know the demographics because she wasn't in there. So she gets that man and he get to be the man air quotes for the listening audience. And what I mean by that is we know the game. We know we be like, Oh, okay. I seen that behavior. That's the, um, it's because of this why I don't have that. We know that been there, done it, seen it, cousins, whoever. It's, people got somebody in their family or somebody they seen where a dude just don't want to do anything, as Nick said. Nick was like, yeah, I'm trying to encourage them. Now, the point that you made, Nick, when you said, um, I'm encouraging them, telling them they need to do this, but they don't want to do it. Well, that becomes nagging. Well, that no. becomes, no, 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 wait, 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 let me finish. And when I say that, and when encouraging 
becomes nagging is because they don't want to do it. So don't talk me to death. Join a social club. That's what you want to do. You got to show and prove. And guys, look at it as a parent because I know if it was me and I'm, I'm hearing this and this is something that I don't want to do. What do parents do? We, the mother feeds you. Make sure you're feeling good. Take care of you when you're sick encourage you and keep encouraging you and keep encouraging you. But if you don't want to do it yourself, it becomes nagging. You'd be like, I got to get out of this house. Boom. Now you get out the house and now you're with a woman who is air quotes for the listening audience, encouraging the individual. And that's how we look at it as, yeah, I'm trying to get you motivated, but they don't want to be motivated because they're complacent. So but that's, then, go ahead. The dudes that'll talk about black women not having their back. So we can't win for losing. Girl, that, I told you I ain't no ride or die. Go ahead. What and you got, Emma you know, D? You can't sit here and ask black women to have your back when you don't have black women's back. But obviously, that's common sense. But I wanted to point out that I want to say all men, it's not just black men, resent the come up woman. The woman that helped them at the bottom when they were struggling, when they were ascending through their career or whatever, while they were still trying to get their stuff together. Most men really don't have a lot of respect for that woman. And when they do reach the pinnacle of whatever they're trying to get to, they'll trade in that woman that was there in the beginning at the groundwork for another woman that's younger, that's thinner, that didn't see them when they were struggling. And so they therefore have a different image of that man. No man of any race particularly values the come up woman, but black women are socialized to be come up women and then mad, bitter, angry, frustrated, resentful after you get treated the way all come up women get treated. Okay. Could it be that they don't want to hear, well, I knew you before. I knew when you didn't have nothing where once they get, once they get to where they are, they are air quotes the man they are respected and the girl is there she's like oh okay so she's gonna give him the highest respect where somebody like us well not you guys i'm just speaking will be like oh okay well yeah you ain't had nothing i'm the one that helped you get it how often have we heard that i i'm the one that helped you get where you are you gonna do what so exactly and so and so the issue isn't because like i said it's not exclusive to black men or the black race this is all people so why are black women socialized and we think it's honorable or pious to be a come up woman. It does not serve you as a woman to be the come up woman. So stop ascribing to and volunteering to be some man's come up woman. Okay. Uh, let's go to the comments. Uh, Maurice Hines Jr. of Facebook said, I think that men and women should encourage each other in every way, but we all must listen to each other instead of bickering back and forth. That uh, yeah, that's that's what we want. <laughs> that's what we want. But the problem is, some people can't handle a conversation, the hard well, conversations. And I so to this caller's um, message, you know, uh-huh. listener's point of as far as bickering and going back and forth. Um, I actually was in a relationship where. There was a lot of back and forth, and this person ascribed to a lot of, like, the manosphere, red pill, save yourself, black men, um, talking points and beliefs, and it was a lot of spirited debate, and what I learned from that relationship is never again, like, um, I'm not going to debate with my romantic partner um, about fundamental beliefs, either we're on the same page or we're not. It's, uh, t- to me, in this day and age, or maybe where I'm at in life, either we vibe and we, we have the same beliefs and we're on the same page, or it's not happening. Uh, because it's just, to me, it's not worth it. Okay. Well, what you got, Nick? Uh, listen, I got to the point in my life where I don't feel like arguing with anybody, debating anybody about anything. Like, period. So yeah, I don't I don't think it's worth it at all. Like either either we are or we aren't. Period. 
like the whole 50 50 thing i'm not gonna i'm not gonna debate a man about the merits of 50 50 or who pays for the first date but like no no you know you're not for me and that's okay god bless you I'm going to keep it pushing. You're going to keep it pushing. I'm not, we're not going to have a conversation about the validity of 50, 50. Now, what is that 50, 50 at this stage of the game? You know, how I felt when they was like, Oh, we want to build together. Sir, at this age, you ain't built. You need to already be built. Like, I'm, no, no, I'm not building a man. And I feel, not. Like, and I feel like it's, that's, it's, it's a mentality shift. It's an energy shift in black women. I, like I said, I see black women as, angry, aggressive, combative, and argumentative. And that's because they're willingly, you know, putting themselves in this, like, delusional position of thinking you can control somebody else or that you can browbeat somebody else into doing what you think they ought to be doing. And you just, you can't, and it doesn't work. Now, what about that person? So with that mindset, that person is saying, oh, okay, well, you're not there for me. You don't encourage me blah, 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 like what Nick was talking about where he tried to make the female look like the victim saying, you know, you're not supportive of me because we won't come and be like, okay, I'm here to help you. Well, th- yeah, see, and that's, I feel like historically that's something that, you know, is expected of black women or whatever. But again, what happens after they've succeeded, you know, and then, Compare that, the come up woman versus the trophy wife. The trophy wife didn't help with nothing. The trophy wife is pretty and cute and keeps her mouth shut. You know, she, trophy wife reaps all the benefits of that man's hard work. Trophy wife gets the esteem and the respect and the admiration of that man because that trophy wife has the attributes that the man values. The come up woman is a mule. And, and he values her based on the services that she provides to him and how she can help him. And it has almost nothing to do with her herself as a human being. Okay. So when a man is like, oh, well, you're not encouraging me. You're not supporting me. What, what good does that do to me? How does it serve me to support you? And see, that's where the oxymoron's at. You're not supportive. Yeah. You're not encouraging me. Yet... You act like my mother. Yeah. So I just, you know. Mm-mm. Damn if you no. did, if you don't. But, but you know what? This is where I fault the females. I fault the females and I'm not female bashing. I fault the females because you, <laughs> you want to give wifely perks to a boyfriend. Yep. No, yep. I'm not doing all that. You, you're not my husband. It's yes. levels to this stuff. It's well, levels to dating. That, and then women get angry and resentful when something doesn't go the man's way. And he gives her a refresher. Hey, you're not my wife. And then she's all mad and frustrated because she was giving him the position of husband when he had asked for it and didn't earn it. What about the husband? The same situation but between a husband and a wife. And see, that's a di- well. You 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 signed you signed up. Yeah, it shouldn't have been a husband. You when, when we signed that contract, be like, oh, you signed the wrong contract. Now here's <laughs> yeah, it was a bad bad deal. Here's here's an alert. Here's an alert phrase. Here's the alert phrase. The alert phrase is, "What are you doing? What are you bringing to the table?" That's a that is my number one. Alert phrase. Yes. I've never that one. And, right. and, see, and it goes back to like what I was saying. That's not all men. No, 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 no. no. What you're bringing to the table is a certain kind of man. and Or a man who's at a certain point in his life. Sir, I'm not going to have a conversation with you. I'm not going to debate you. I'm not going to enlighten you. I'm not educating you. We're not, we're not, the conversation dead. It's over. Because I don't entertain that. But I feel like black women are socialized. Well, you need to tell him and let him know. (laughs) Listen, she bobbing and weaving for the listening audience. (laughs) Go ahead. Tell him what time it is. And you don't tell men nothing. Maybe in passing, flip it, you know, here's a penny or two for your thoughts. But 
black women, I think, have been so socialized to sit here and think we are we are even capable of telling a man how to function as a man. That's that's his journey. That's his path. That's his business, and that's on him. That's his responsibility to figure out how to function as a man. You do not need to tell him nothing as a woman about that. I agree. I totally agree. Agree or disagree, Nick? I agree. I shoot. Listen here, that's too much work. You supposed to be you 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 uh, you supposed to be an added here. Like this is the way it goes. I feel you on that conversation. Done. I'm not having a conversation, especially when you're coming for me. So if you come in for me, you uh, let's bring it to the youth. You inbox me. So your interest is me. So clearly you were interested in me. And then once I say, oh, okay, well, we could go for a date. Now you want to tell me what you want. That's not how that works. Because if you're interested in me, I need to be telling you my expectations. Because remember, you came to me. Uh Now, if I'm coming to you and I'm desiring you, then okay, that's where that aggressiveness should that's when you should look at that as being aggressive. Okay. And I'm telling you, oh, okay, I'm looking for you. And then you tell me what you want. So me, you telling me what you want. And I came towards you. That is more so of, I'm going to do what you need and what you want because I desire you. So fellas, if you come in toward, I'm just going to say me as an example, and you're desiring that female, it needs to be about her, not about, and watch this inbox her hey i don't know what they say little mama that's the blows i'm like how old are we but anyway hey girl blah 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 and then you say you're talking and then you say what do you bring to the table remember i told you that dude that was like well how much you make an hour and i was like treat my income like child support don't count on it (laughs) yeah Uh -uh. so those conversations those questions you know that it's just because it's a train of thought right like it's just it's it's not it's not even a, it's beyond a red flag at this point. It's like oh you're not for me. We're, we don't we're not compatible. You don't even need an explanation. You don't need why are you even ask how much money I make an hour? What? The, and you know what? Because you know what that says to me. I didn't ask you how much you made an hour. Because when you desired that female, real talk, fellas, that means that, and I'm old school. You are a provider. So if you're desiring this female, there's something in there, in her that you like. So let me get to where I need to be to maintain her lifestyle. This is what I desire. Because what's going to ultimately end up happening is you're going to get her and then you're going to realize, oh, wait a minute, I cut off, you know, I bit off too much, you know, more than I can chew. And then you're going to try to bring her down and be like, oh, okay, you a gold digger. Oh, you need to not do this and try to knock her down a few pegs because you don't want to come up. And then you're going to go find somebody else that was like her and what made you attracted to her. Ladies, don't go for it. I'm going to go to, we got to, um, hold on a minute. We got a comment. Women and men should bring what they can to the table and build from there to a beautiful journey. At 20. Okay, right. And I at like, 20. About, with our previous question about, you know, you know, high school relationships. I'm not a fan of high school relationships, period. Because, yeah, it can be real. You can get pregnant and then you got a lifelong soul tie with a person. And you're just really young and immature. I feel like when both men and women, when you're really young, you should be building yourself up. And I think that's the issue. You hear these what I hear from a lot of black dudes is like, what do you bring to the table? I want someone to build with me. Instead of, when I feel like black men are be focused on, I need to build myself up. It's on me. It's my own personal responsibility to build myself. Right. Not, I'm waiting for a woman, the right woman to help me build. You should be building right now. You should be building that, That's a sucker. Yourself. Yeah, that's sucker moves to me. It's, 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 it's real weak and it's, and it really, to me, I receive it as I'm dependent on a woman. I can't be successful. I can't attain resources or wealth without the assistance of a woman. To me, that's not masculine. And so it's just like this whole narrative of like, oh, well, find someone to build with. 
build by yourself if you can find if you can find a partner to build with that's wonderful yeah that's and wonderful. look and call on her to decorate yeah. have it built call on her to decorate that, that's it's, it it's wonderful if you can find but, uh, but what if you can't and why and while you're waiting to find your woman to build with you should be building already like you should be actively building whether you're with someone or with you're not with someone whether you're male or female but what I hear a lot is is I'm just I'm looking for someone to build with instead of like well I'm building this or that and I hope to have someone to um enjoy it with but this is what I'm working on right now it's a very different mentality it it is what you got Nick you build mm-hmm. you building with somebody or they should they already be built I mean you both should be bringing something to the table but if you want to elevate to the next level then yeah you're you're and you're together yeah you're building okay that's what you do okay. when you're someone like that you both have what you have you've already built yourself up to where you're at you get together and you decide okay this is cool but I'd rather be in this level and since you're together you're doing it together that's building to me that's building you're already at your level you, know, you take care of you whatever you get with somebody you like minded individuals and you decide well, let's do this let's get to this level together and yeah okay um, I'm unplug your device, Nick. I hear it. Is it because it seems like it might be hot? It's like the the thing yeah, is going uh-huh. doing this thing. Okay. Uh-huh. Well, she said, you know, what you bring to the table together. I, baby, when you already built, I ain't bringing my building to the table. Call it what you want. Probably because I done been married, divorced. Like no, no. This is it. Probably like that dude to be like, I keep buying furniture and then the relationship don't work. Then I ain't got no, I'm tired of buying furniture or how, you know what I mean? They'd be like, dang, I done gave up about two, three houses. Not anymore. My thing is, what you have, my building is my building. Can you share my building? Yes, you can. You can share my building. You can use some office space. However, comma, I'm not giving you my building. I'm not. I'm not giving you my, at this stage of the game, you should have your own building. Yeah. And then together we can come put our minds together and be like, you rent your space and you be over here in mine or I'll rent my space and I'm over here in yours. We share. Right. I, I'm i not, uh, mm, that at this okay. stage of the game, over 40, baby, if you ain't built, I ain't got it in me. I, I don't have it in me to be the mule. Right. And I feel like that's what, you know, to be blunt, you know, that's really what it is. Let's get real blunt with it. They want a woman that's willing to mule for them. And I feel like because, um, you know, they, not just they particularly, but it's like society in general, view black women as like the bottom of the total pole, the least desirable. So it's like, well, how dare you have standards and you're the least desirable woman. When I get some money and some wealth, I'm going to go it's me a Latina or a racially ambiguous, you know, German woman or whatever. Um, I feel like black women are in a really tough position, but which just leads to the point of it's really important for black women to have their own, to build themselves up. And then obviously, after you've taken all this time to build yourself up and have your own, have your own resources, you're not going to put that at risk over a new dude that walks into your life and is talking about 50-50. Baby! Like of what I brought to the table before I even met you. Go, go ahead, Nick. What you got? Since you said the building, I'm going to put this scenario. Now, I ain't talking about just some regular random. Uh-huh. Go random ahead. Food, but, you know, you get together with somebody, say, you're living in a $500,000 house. Uh-huh. He's living in a $500,000 house because you both have done uh-huh. well for your you guys get together and decide to stay together, get married, and then he has his five hundred thousand dollar house. You have your five hundred thousand dollar house, but you're both looking at this million dollar house. Are you just gonna say forget it? You rent George and stay with me, uh, and I'll share. And or are you both gonna say okay, we are both 
at $500,000 house. We both together, because now we're married, want this million dollar house. You will build with that man. Y'all going to do what y'all got to do to get that million dollar house, right? Okay. You, you want me to answer the question? In my, in my, look, in my male answer. Go ahead, male. Okay. Oh, <laughs> At this st- at this stage of the game, this is what I'm going to do. My $500,000 house, I really love. They love their $500,000 house. We'll sit there. We'll have a conversation. Whose house are we going to live in at age 40? Ain't nobody trying to have a house note. Let's get this money and live happy. So the million-dollar house, I'm cool with not having. I'm like, okay, let me visit my friends who got that high house note because our stuff is paid for. So I'm all about let's get this money. Let's live comfortably. See, building, when you say building to me, that sounds like work. It is work. Building. That's an action word. We're already built. Let's have some fun. Let's kick it. What are we doing? Are you comfortable in your present state? Yes. Are you comfortable? Yes. Let's do this. And let's make some money. Now, I understand. Make some money together. You could do that. That million dollar house in it. A girl in a million dollar house can come with bills. Right. That means we gotta work. We gotta work to pay it, honey. If we can both afford it, I won't. Well, okay. And, and see, I ain't mad at you because, like I said, I gave you my male answer. I gave you my male answer. You got your answer. You want it? Million dollar house, baby, baby. Watch this. It, it all that stuff look good. But at this stage, at this age, your girl be like, when I see new car, I ain't lying. When I see a new car coming up, bum, I be looking at the year. I like what I like. And I be like, oh, they got a new car. That's a car note. I be looking at the outgo. I look at the outgo. I do. I, the financial outgo. I'm like, okay, they got that car note. They got this, this. They're working here. Even though I won't ask how much you make an hour, I can about guesstimate. And just look and be like, okay, they have that, 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 that mean, I don't know what that bank account looking like. And see, I'm all on the legal thing. So I don't know what that bank account looking like, but that means that, oh, they got to go to work. Can we go to Martha's Vineyard tomorrow? And that's not expensive, but it's like when I'm ready to go and do whatever it is I desire to do, I can't do that with that person because they got to go to work to pay for A, B, C, and D. In E and F, and they, they can't miss no days unless they got hours, you know what I mean, accumulated. So I look at things a little different at this stage of the game. Now, I want somebody to work. You got to have your job, but I need you to be already built. See, that building thing, that's too much work for me. That's work. I, I feel like it's a youth thing. That's supposed to, That's why I say when you're young and in your 20s, you should be building yourself up. Like, so that whether you have a partner or you don't have a partner, when you're in your mid-30s, you're built. And I feel like, uh, you know, as far as your house question, yeah, I wouldn't want a million because that sounds like a liability. That's debt. I'm taking on, I'm accruing new debt and I have to work really hard to get out of debt. So I'm not trying to just go back into debt, you know, where I'm happy with what I already have. And that like, part. I, I'm, I'm, see, and that's, and that's the thing. And I've seen this on social media where they be like, don't deal with a man who's not where he wants to be in that life because he's going to be very, he's going to be hard to be with romantically, okay? Because he's building himself up. He's pouring himself into his career or his company Mm -hmm. or whatever. He ain't got time for it and he's going to be frustrated. And a man who's not where he want to be at in life is going to be frustrated. And so, yeah, I want you to, at this age, you know, at this point in the game, yeah, my expectation is that you're already built, I'm already built, and you're happy you, you're you're happy. You're content with where you are, because if you're not, then yeah, you're still in hustle mindset, and you know you're like a go getter and all that stuff. And I'm trying to just chill and enjoy the fruits of my labor at this point. Okay, let's go to the comment. Maurice Hines Jr. on Facebook said, "So is it wrong for a man to be very independent financial wise?" Ladies, that's his question. No, it ain't wrong. I need you to be independent. I, I think maybe he was misunderstanding because what we're saying is uh, a man should be financially independent. Like, for sure. So if a man's not financially independent, what does that mean? 
That means he's looking for somebody to help him along the way, looking for his mother. Right, because he cannot pay bills. He can't manage an apartment or a home on his own. I cannot. Look, I'm like... That's so youthful. That's so youthful. I mean, yeah, it's youthful, but it's like, how can you as a man not be financially independent, but then want a woman, which is expensive? Relationships cost men money. Or want to have children. Why you want children? You can't pay for children. Why you want a, a wife? You can't afford a wife. You can't even take her out. Can't even give her nothing nice. Watch this. You know, so- Watch this. This is where come in. You want a wife because she's a helpmate. So you're going to marry her so she can help you get financially. Okay, exactly. Exactly. And then when they get to where they want to be at, then they want a trophy. Then yeah. They, they don't want a helpmate. They don't need a helpmate. See, when they get to that level of success, being a helpmate is irrelevant. It's all how do you look? How do you make me feel? Baby. You ain't got a mule when he when he's <laughs> ascended you then he don't expect his woman to mule. But when he's down and out and struggling and trying to get up there, I need a mule. You know what? <laughs> we need the men to uh, chime in on this call. Oh, oh th- these are all men that's talking and they chiming in because this one says that's the same way men looks at marriage as far as they look at it as contracts, business. True or false? That, this is a guy that said that. Yeah, because it's a liability for a man. It's a much greater liability for men to be married than a woman. But I think with in the black community, because you can look this up, the pay is uh, flat. There is no gender gap in income between black men and black women. So black women are just as likely to be paying alimony in the divorce. True. Or to be... Um, you know, in a 50-50 dynamic where she's paying just as, you know, it's, you know, evenly split as far as expenditures, where marriage is not uh, not super beneficial for black women. It is the truth. You ain't lying. It's, it's Especially not. when you it's got souvenirs. Every, every other racial demographic in America, there is a substantial pay gap between men and women. So when a woman marries a man, she's it benefits her because she's getting with someone who makes substantially more money than she does. That's not the case for black women. And see, you know what? You do have um, some women who make more money than a man. And this is not um, a black or black or white thing. This is a life thing. And the man can't handle it. Now, me oh, personally, yeah. I don't, that, that right there doesn't make me, uh, the man of the house. If I make more money than him, I need you to man up. I need you to be the mule. Like, can you do that? You got the muscles. You know what I'm saying? I'm taking care of myself. And what's happening is we tend to get in that role of, oh, okay. I'm used to taking care of myself. I'm used to doing this. I'm used to doing that. That man comes, you're not going to make me the mule. Cause guess what? I will sit down. I will be the camel that sits down on the beach, okay? And let me get my toenails done. I do not rely on me, real talk. And it'll be like, oh, okay, this camel, I carry you a little bit, but when I get tired, I'm going to Bobby Brown your tail. I'm going to have a seat. I'm going to tell you, that's what I'm going to do. So ladies out there, I need you guys... Take care of yourself. Like you said, you lead a mule. They lead a mule, the one that got them where they going. And then they go with the trophy. Be the trophy wife, honey. Be the trophy wife. Take time out for yourself. Do not deviate. And this is for men too. Take time out for yourself because you don't want to be resenting somebody that you call yourself loving. Because it could come off real crazy. You have to have that time. I hear, oh, Mel, you're so selfish. Call it what you want. That's important. Mm, and, and real talk, I deserve to be because I worked hard and I am not going to sit there and give you all of what I have. That's like training somebody and you give them everything you learned for them to take your job. Not happening. OK, I'll give you a little bit. But this stuff is earned. Take time out for yourself. Make sure that your psyche is right because you have people who get with other people to make them feel better because 
They don't love themselves. My thought on men who don't take care of their children, I told you guys before, and if you're just tuning in, I'll tell you again. If you can't take care of your children, what that tells me is that you lack self-love because that's your blood that's going through their veins. And if you're okay with your child not having, that means that you're okay with you not having. And if I choose to be with you, that means you're okay with us not having. It's a, tr- it's a trickle down effect here, people. Right. And, and I feel like go ahead. Uh, on the subject of men taking care of their children, there's a lot of men who are, again, complacent. They are comfortable with their children living below the poverty line or barely above the poverty line. Okay, and so ladies, you can't control that man. You cannot browbeat him. You cannot beg, plead, barter, negotiate with him to give a hoot about his children's well-being. That is who he is. Okay? And so, and that goes back to like the vetting process in dating. But if a man is comfortable and he's like, well, they don't need that, especially when you get into the whole baby mama culture within the black community, which is very prevalent, and it's like, oh, well, I'm not going to pay child support because my baby mama disrespect me. Because... What so your child has to suffer and go without because of your feelings, even though y'all two aren't together? Like, this type of mentality is something black women need to really avoid and be cognizant of and acknowledge when it's present because there's a whole lot of men who are quite comfortable with it. Because men view children in general differently, I think it's very common for men to not give a crap about their offspring. It's because tragic. They just don't. They don't care about their kids. Period. It is what it is. Accept it. Accept that there's a lot of men who do not care about their kids, especially when they're not with the mother of their children. And usually the how they feel about their children is contingent upon what their status is with the mother of the children. That's why you shouldn't have children out of wedlock as a woman. Okay, I got a comment for you, Amber D. Amber D, there... Okay. Amber D, there's a part in a child's, there's a point in a child's life, wait, a part in a child's life and who he is that's, oh, that's the mom's responsibility. That's from a male. Financially? Because if we're talking about traditional roles, traditional dynamics, financially, a child's life, you know, 18, up to 18, is the father's responsibility. So again, if if we're talking about modern times or if we're talking about, you know, a traditional role, the man's supposed to bring home the bacon and the woman is supposed to cook it. She supposed to fry that. Ain't cook it. Ain't no air fryer. She supposed to fry that thing in a cast iron iron skillet. skillet. Okay. (laughs) So when it comes, again, when it comes to talking, discussing children, men, and then even the, the inception of child support was to make men take care of their, their offspring. If you didn't want to have the baby, stop nutting everywhere and stop nutting the women you don't know or don't want to be with. The end. Like, that's, that's all there is to it. But as women, you need to look at these men and see what's really before you. Now, well, you know, maybe if he loves me and, you know, it's just because, you know, he's down now and blah. You provide all uh, you're talking about the keep a nigga baby. I, I, let's see here. Honey, let me ring my own bell. <laughs> honey, the, honey, the keep a nigga baby don't work. Because they going to keep on doing what they do. But I got to tell you, because I'm looking at the time. If it's anything to this reincarnation. I need to make sure mine is all right. Because I ain't trying to come back to no broke family. I don't want to be poor. Coming back poor, talking about something. Oh, we look, we sitting there like an episode of Good Times where the lady was eating cat food. Like, no. I, I'm not trying to come back. Do everything that you can for your offsprings. I'm a firm believer of that. Because ain't nobody trying to do any of that. Let me see if we got another. Oh, there we go. Yeah, we got more comments coming in here. Okay, so uh, Nathan Woodard of Facebook said, nothing I heard today is traditional. Well, guess what? Ain't nobody going to be no mule. 
Ain't nobody going to be no mule. That's what we are. We are at right now. But these women nowadays, honestly, before we go, I am not lying. As girl Claudia Jordan says, is, is, is it's got to be a race to the bottom. It, 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 it's got to be because some of these people on here, there is no way I had posted a comment. Um, I posted a post and I said, first date me, let's make this quick. Have you ever, or are you on crack? Him. What the H shock about the question, right? Now to me, these, let's make the, let's expedite things. Let me know off top. What I'm give me an option. Am I gonna deal with somebody that's on crack? No, I'm not because we already know crack dizzle is not consistent. They be missing for two and three days. Like, get out of here. Okay. <laughs> Depending on what's important in your relationship. There were people on there that I know, successful women, that were asking, how long have they been clean? Baby. Boo. Honey, when I seen that, I was like, oh, man, there's a the potential. Like, they, they're willing to give a shot. So, I was like, is it a race to the bottom? What's happening? Yeah, dating for potential. Like, now, now, here's the thing. I might, because it, that's like with anything like crack, um, well, no, it is. Any addiction is bad. There's a status thing. I'd rather you be on powder than I'm uh, for real than crack. Nick looking at me like I'm crazy. I ain't dealing with nobody. Let me, let me be clear. I'm not dealing with anybody on anything. But here's my thing. The shock, the shock virus, like powder. You on powder. Like, let me come home and I'm thinking you pay to build a house is foreclosed. Boom. It's just one hit. The sign out front. Don't nickel and dime me. Take my iron, my toaster. Like I'm going to iron. I'm looking like, where is my iron? Like, no, I don't need, don't, don't boom, boom, boom. I don't need this to drag out. Let me know right now. Boom. House for clothes. All this cat on powder. Bye. I'm done. Thank you. Appreciate you. I don't want no 10, no five to 10 year thing. Nickel and diamond me. And then that get my feelings in like, oh, they suffer from this. Oh, for better, for worse. Lord Jesus, I'm so sorry. And I know it's in the vials for better, for worse. Listen, when you tell me the worst, I'm out already. I ain't got to, I ain't got to sign up for or sign up for this contract. I ain't doing it. And this is me talking real talk. And on that post, I saw the dudes that were crack addicts or currently on it, dibbling and dabbling because of the way that they responded. I was I was laughing because they were justifying. They was like, well, that don't mean there's more things out there like um, what the one say uh, child molesters and all this. Other. Got it. But I can Google that. You know what I mean? If it's disclosed. Like, mm, oh, if he was a her, oh, well, let me check. Let me do a background check. Born this way. Like, okay. But see, when you do something, I need it not to affect me. That's the moral of the story. I Let your stuff affect you if that's what you choose to do. As long as it does not affect me. And see, I don't want to be going along for the ride. I told y'all last week, I am not the ride or die chick. No. I, it'd be like ride or die. I'm going to take my chances. Because I need to know what's happening. Because the end result will be, I'm rolling with you and then we both diminish. No. I like I like the confident guy. The cocky guy. I like that guy because they're going to do everything that they need to do to stay afloat for themselves. I do like the calm guy too that's just in the corner. But he's he know he got himself together. His self-esteem is cool. You come up with problems and you telling me all your problems... I'm like, we could be friends. I'm going to friends on you because this is what I'm doing and we're not compatible. And you can see that giving people, you know, you sit there giving people chances because you feel sorry for them is only going to cause stress for you. Amber D for the listening audience is doing thumbs down. She like, no, don't date the dude you feel sorry for. Don't date for potential, especially at this age. You date for potential back when you in your twenties, like, oh, I see you going somewhere right now. It ain't happening. Get there. We could be friends. We could be cool. I ain't going to look down on you. We, we cool. Friend zone. But I am not deliberately signing up to date someone who I already know is going gonna, is gonna to be work. I'm trying to coast right now. I didn't climbed. Climbed. It's like, okay, I'm on a break. I'm not saying that you need to stop and you have plateaued. But no, so to Nick's point, when she was talking about the houses, her scenario of that, climb, 
She's like, she going for the million dollar house. Love it. So I guess date, what I'm saying is date what actually works for you, what you're looking for. And if you already have yourself together and you know what it is that's missing in your life and let's pray to God, it's not love because you got to have self-love. And you're just looking for companionship, then do that. And when it's done, it's done. You know, I don't want to see an episode on Dateline. Kind of like what Amber D was saying. You can't change somebody. You can't make them to what you want them to be. And as far as, uh, okay, let's see here. I'm going to read this comment real quick. Maurice Hines Jr. says, see, it's a privilege to be called a man. But there's a lot of fathers that play more of a daddy role to other women's kids. Um, Let's see here. Me, wait a minute. Me, I'm a father. Let me see. Me, I am a father, a dad to my sons before I become a stepfather. And you are not wrong, sir. You are not. And that's it in a nutshell. So we got to make sure we do that. Let me give you today's footnote. Oh, Oh, Jerry Springer gone. Jerry Springer. All right, today's footnote. It's all right to tell a man to lift himself by his own bootstraps, but it is a cruel jest to say to a bootless man that he ought to lift himself by his bootstraps. And that's from uh, Martin Luther King. So there you go. Us women, we like lift yourself up by your own bootstraps. But if he don't have no boots, sir, I suggest you go get yourself a pair of boots. That's what I got for you. All right, lovely people, get yourself some boots for your mama or something, okay? Before you come stomping around over here, okay? Okay. All right, lovely people, that is my time. I thoroughly enjoyed you as I do each and every single Saturday. Sorry for the technical difficulties. And... Let's have some fun. Thanks for all the callers that called in in the comments. You know, we love you for listening. Subscribe to all our socials. Truly appreciate you. And I want you guys to know the views on Shop Talk with Mail today was just that. Our views. Find you. Embrace you. Most importantly, always, always love you. Until next week, people. Go ahead, Nick. Shop Talk <laughs> I love you guys for listening. Peace.